Grounded is one of my favourite games going. I'm hyping it up and promoting it, and I never really hear bad words said against it, because I really truly believe it's a great mix of RPG and survival. But of course, there's some things I've always wanted to see added. Obviously now with the last update incoming, we know so much isn't going to be added in the future. We can only hope for Grounded 2, which I think is absolutely going to be happening. Grounded is a franchise, that's Microsoft's words, not mine, and so you're not having a franchise unless you've got multiple games. So, take what I'm about to say with a pinch of salt. These are the 10 things I wish Grounded would have added, but I kind of also think they could come for Grounded 2, or hope they do at least. It's only opinion, you guys can have a different one. Give me your top 3, top 5, maybe top 10 if you want to fill up the comments. Grounded has been an amazing game, and it's still going to be an amazing update with the last content drop coming. And when you realise that only 13 people initially worked on Grounded, and that has only still just progressed to about 25 now, it's amazing how much content I've managed to add in the last four years. So my expectations have never been over the top. I've realised how hard it is to make games, and realised what they've done is an achievement in itself. But that still doesn't stop me wanting more. Let's go. Number 10, a minor one for me, I would have loved to see a bit more customization for the kids. I totally get that they wanted these characters to be unique and to have an actual personality, rather than going down the character customization route. I think a lot of you guys would have preferred to be able to just character customize yourself and really make up a brand new character. But respect what the devs wanted in terms of the story and the scope of Grounded and how they really wanted you to buy into the four characters of Pete. Hoops, Willow and Max, but I still think they missed the beat not having any kind of cosmetic items like brand new shirts, maybe new styles of trousers, anything that could have made the gear of the kids look just a bit different. Yes, I know, we've got like a billion armour sets and Grounded actually has one of the biggest collection of armour clothing sets in any survival game, with only Conan Exiles and all its DLC maybe rivaling it. But it still would have been nice if there was a way to customise our characters just a little bit more, give them a little bit more personality or a vibe that we liked with different types of shirts and stuff that we could have maybe found around the yard. Of course, most of the time you wouldn't have seen us wearing that because we would have been wearing armour and I'm guessing that's the reason why they never bothered. But it still would have been cool even if we could have adjusted or changed the hairstyles, maybe the types of glasses. Even small cosmetic changes just like that for the face would have been something players would have enjoyed finding out in the world, giving them new ideas about how to style the hair. Maybe it could have been the remnants of hair gel, and that's what gave you the ability to go ahead and change your hairstyle. So for the sequel, absolutely give us more ways to customise our characters in the beginning, even if we aren't going to see the majority of that stuff, or at least think about a character customization, since that's what a lot of other people wanted. No real order with these by the way, but I think I would have loved to have seen more of a difference in some of the biomes. Everyone has wanted a cold biome, and I can't believe we never got the upturned fridge with loads of ice cubes and frozen water leaking from it. That would have been something interesting to have, and it could have been mini enough rather than trying to work out the seasons and snow and stuff. Or my other idea to have a fully scrap yard zone where everything was made out of broken toy cars, Meccano and toy car or airplane kits and stuff just lying all over the floor. It would have been epic to be able to craft junk armour or junk weapons made out of some of the resources that you got from this zone and you could have had more flavour and injection of robots. Taking on a massive boss and maybe using something like a magnet to maybe defeat it. I do love the yard, it is all fitting nicely and the upper yard does kind of gel well in terms of the difficulty and what you would expect to see maybe in a backyard. But it does feel like we could have had just a bit more variation and something a bit more crazier in some parts of the backyard. When the playgrounds mode came out there was talk that they may be able to add new sandboxes in the future, maybe one with a large pond sized area so we can make more advanced content just like we've seen in the pond labs. Now they haven't definitively ruled out any more playground updates and I'd be surprised if we don't see obviously hotfixes and maybe some more improvements to it once everything's been gone live for PlayStation and Switch. But it does look like playgrounds maybe never took off as much as they wanted to and I've got to say it's down to the devs for that. They really should have maybe waited and made sure that they had ways to review and share the worlds a little bit easier and better. 
Not having a browser where you could see all the playgrounds at launch with this feature was a massive misstep. It really limited the appeal, it really limited the reach that it could reach with people. People just having to rely on getting codes either via watching YouTube videos or scrolling through Reddit. And it does baffle me why they thought it was a good idea to launch without that feature. Of course it did get added and it did get added relatively soon, but I feel like the damage was kind of done. That combined with people expecting a survival update, it meant that Playgrounds never really took off. I'd love to be corrected and if Obsidian want to give me a whole bunch of data that says actually people have been spending more time in Playgrounds than they have any of the other game modes, great stuff. And I'm really glad they added it. I think it's amazing it adds so much replayability to it, but people haven't bought into it as much, certainly not watching YouTube videos or live streams. It might be down to grounded having only that Xbox appeal and maybe when it goes live on Switch and PlayStation, we will see them explode in more popularity. One thing that could have helped with that absolutely is more sandboxes, more templates for us to use and maybe think a bit outside the box. So sure have a pond themed one, but why not do it and go and add one that would have been inside the shed or one that is completely underground. Give the people what they want. Everyone's been crying about going inside the house. Why not just make four walls as if it's a living room, put a couple pieces of stack furniture in there and let us make the rest of the map. I guess I've expanded on this a little bit from just being more sandboxes. It was the way that Playgrounds got implemented and I think that it should have been something that would have had more love if it had been there with the 1.0 update. But in a Grounded 2, all this feedback could be taken on board. They'll have the server browsers in there ready to go if it's something they're still going to have. And I think with a bit more promotion and the right way to do it with something enticing like a house template, I think Playgrounds could be massive again for the sequel. And still sticking with Playgrounds, it is more mini-made ones by them. It feels also like they haven't promoted enough of people's Playgrounds. Where's the love on the forum site? Where's the sort of spotlight on Discord where maybe your moderators are going to do their community event and they'll just focus on playing Playground mode? Where's the shout out on social media like Twitter and I'm guessing Facebook or TikTok? We don't see enough promotion of some of the tools and some of the features Grounded have added and I feel like they should do that a bit more. What a better way to start by adding maybe still some mini maps that they can create themselves. We briefly saw this with the launcher playgrounds when we had the arena battle but that barely got promoted themselves. They didn't even reveal the code properly for about a week until after it actually got released. It would be cool to see what Obsidian can do with the tools themselves more. I know they love to see what we can create and that's the whole point, but still, promoting it is still part and parcel of getting more people encouraged to play it. If Grounded 2 is going to be a year and a half away, maybe two years away, what better thing to have to tide us over where they could maybe release one of these special Obsidian made playground maps every three months. Get some of the other members of staff that maybe aren't going to be as busy some Q&A testers or people with some ambitions of level design, maybe juniors, to come up with some ideas and that could help them flesh out some stuff that they might want to add for Grounded 2. Don't get me wrong, I know how much time it might take to make a great map. I've seen the one where you can obviously become a lemon seller or whatever it was, the cookie clicker one, and it took me hours just to make a simple only down map. Heck, I still think it would have been a good idea just to hire someone with some skills to go ahead and make that their full-time job between now and Grounded 2 and just keep releasing little minimap after minimap completely endorsed by Obsidian or make it some sort of competitions for players to earn the right to be endorsed. This is an official Obsidian map made by the members of the community. Give us some small experiences to tide us over and promote more the people that are helping make some of this content. And I guess that might lead on to the next one, proper DLC. I can't believe Grounded haven't actually added it. I think it's amazing that in this day and age, some developers don't want to do games as a service. They don't want to rinse everyone's money and take 20 bucks for one skin or add a season pass where you're grinding away just to receive some cosmetics. I love that Grounded aren't trying to fleece people. They've made a great game, people to enjoy. It has got a finite life, but that's it, it's done. But there is still, in my opinion, a huge clamour for more content. And people would have paid a decent amount of money because of the quality that Obsidian have done with their game to play some brand new DLC. 
At this stage, obviously any ideas that might have gone into a paid DLC, I'm sure will now just be held back for the full sequel. But when you've made a great game and people love it and you've got an invested player base like 20 million people trying it out on Games Pass, it seems a bit of a bad business decision not to at least release one paid component. I want good games to earn money. I want you guys to have lots and lots of money. And Grounded absolutely deserve to be able to have a paid component or a paid DLC. It could have been going to the gas station. It could have been the front yard. It could have been going to a small adventure in Omnion. And yes, it could have been going inside the house. I truly feel like they've missed the beat here by not having the playgrounds component be the gateway to DLC. Like obviously being a bit more than what we can do with just general tools, still have the mechanics of the game dev that you use. But yeah, it would have been great to see a paid playgrounds map that maybe supported Obsidian or maybe even a charity drive. Give some proceeds to Obsidian and make the rest of it go to Extra Life or Captain Planet Foundation. Grounded is so earnest sometimes, but we all know that Microsoft still want to make a ton of money. The only thinking I have is that they want to get onto Grounded 2 because they know that's going to make a lot of money and maybe they'll have a better future planned out in terms of DLC and other ways to support the game in future. Again, there was once talk about wing gliders, being able to use them to move around the yards a lot simpler and quicker. Considering there are so many flying bugs in Grounded, it's almost a crying shame we didn't get a more upgraded system to get around the yard. Yes, we're going to have teleporters in New Game Plus. Yes, we've got zip lines. But how cool would it have been to be able to glide around just really super fast? You can make so many more new mini games if you was able to do that. Gliding mechanics have been super popular ever since Breath of the Wild, and I still think it would have been a great addition if they'd added it. There was once talk that they were thinking about maybe the shed or way to have level design added to it so it would make sense, but it looks like they were kind of not feeling it and just didn't really add that or give much to it. It seems small, and I'm not really placing it that much as more important than some of the others, but in terms of something they could have added that I don't think would have upset a lot of the rest of the game, I still think this would have been good. Relying on just a dandelion tough to go slowly and stop you from landing and breaking your legs, I feel like there was a misstep there. They could have added something just a little bit quicker and with a little bit more control, just to make it a bit more fun. I think most games need filler content in terms of upgrade and crafting, and you need to make things a grind. I do find though that the upgrade system in Grounded, it is a bit convoluted and it is just a little bit overcomplicated. Running around, getting the upgrade rocks, no problem at first. You think, great, okay, just got to keep finding more of these and that's like a resource that we can get. Of course, it is finite, so it does run out and then we have to rely on the bugs. But then we have to go and craft two new elements, which are the globs and then the jewels. And I feel this is where it just went a bit too overboard. Don't get me wrong, I like the idea that we have a reason now to go and use a lot of bug parts and fight more bugs. But the fact is, we end up just grinding wolf spiders and black ox beetles, as well as obviously finding lots of the green scarabs. And it just becomes boring. After doing 100 days of it and then 150 days playthrough, I came to realise how boring it is aiming and taking swipe at the same creatures just to keep upgrading. I always defended it at first, saying that we don't need to upgrade every armour set and every weapon set. But I started to realise that once you've done everything in the game, a lot of people do just want to carry on playing and they do kind of want to mess around with the rest of the gear. They maybe don't want to load it up in just creative mode and see what it's like. They want to have that sense of completion that they've crafted every weapon, every armour set and max upgraded it to see whether or not they could play with something new. But it's just far too much of a grind and just not enjoyable by that stage to really invest a lot of time. And if you're playing multiplayer, that's even worse. Mechanically as well, it's kind of very similar as well. Like making the globs and then you just got to make the actual jewels. It's too much of the same process. I really love the idea of New Game Plus if we're going to be using brand new candy types or potentially infusing them and making double types of weapons. Like swords with sour and maybe mint on them. I've got no real problem with the way that weapons and armor change and actually got their perks and attributes added as you upgraded it. Ultimately, they should have opened it up a little bit more and made other bugs available to go ahead and craft and make some of them weapons a bit. And now we've still got to grind through all their materials to get to New Game Plus because there's no way to skip. You've still got to get all your weapons up to level 9 before going up further. 
I just feel like there should have been maybe a more generic bug item that we got from higher tier bugs that we could have used instead. Hunting just wolf spiders and black ox beetles, it just becomes not that much fun. Don't get me wrong, I don't want quartzite or back to them old days again where we just do nothing but use only quartzite, but I think there's a medium ground there. I like the milk motors in the game, it's given me hours of content looking around for them and trying to make sure I get every single one to upgrade and of course to get the 100% scorecard. They obviously give the bonuses to help increase our health, our stamina and maybe our mutations. This did replace basically a normal simple XP system and I've got to say though, I think I still would have preferred a bog standard one. Pretty much every survival game does it but it kind of works. When you kill a bug, you get that sense of a little achievement that pops up because you've gained a bit more XP. And then you get to your next level, and then you can normally choose what attribute you want to put it in. By making it rely on the milk molars, we're forever looking around the yard. And that's great for exploration and encourages players to go and discover more. Because of course you could have people just leveling up by doing the most basic common things like killing the same bug over and over again. But if there is going to be a sequel, I would definitely prefer more just the bog standard XP system. It's kind of there in the science shop to get the actual recipes and that takes us through. I just feel like that would have been a better way to have upgrades and stuff for us. Could have still had the milk molars in the game, but maybe they would have been a boost to the XP system to give us extra five levels or whatever it could be so we could get another attribute point. I think having an XP system would have made the grind for certain resources a little bit more easier, especially when it comes to crafting and obviously fighting bugs. When you're crafting up items, it's still nice to see that, yeah, you're getting XP for making 50 brand new sets of mushroom slop so that you can go ahead and build your walls. And the grind to kill certain bugs over and over again is always going to be better when you can see your little XP bar going up, knowing that you're contributing to something else too. It is open for maybe abuse where players could potentially just craft something really basic over and over again to get max XP. But it kind of exists in a lot of other survival sandbox games for a reason because a lot of them usually don't have other stuff going on. There isn't that many complicated systems in them types of games. Grounded is different. It's got more of that RPG feel and stuff, but that's even more reason to have an XP system like most RPG games do. I love the fact we get brand new recipes by picking up bug parts. I love the fact that it unlocks maybe ideas or suggestions about what we can craft. But it would have been just so much nicer if we did have the choice to choose our health, our stamina, or whatever, by leveling up our character. Everyone, I think, can agree on this one. We all wanted to see some sort of weather event come to the game. From Adam Brennicke, he said that it would be maybe quite complex to have more stuff like weather added. Maybe they could do everything to have like a wet look as if it was raining, but snow and stuff, it would be incredibly challenging. So maybe weather could be a little bit out of the realms of possibility, but it would have been nice to have seen a few more actual events. We might see this in a way once we have the new game plus, where we're going to see different changes to the colours of the tree and different items around the yard. And Grounded does a great job of making you feel like it's reactive because things happen, like the haze gets turned off and the infection spreads. Or even just having like the shovel being able to be turned over and helpful to get on top of the picnic table. But it would have been cool to see a bit more emphasis on events that could happen in the yard. Maybe at fireworks night, someone's thrown some crackers over the fence or some fireworks and we can set them off to get some sort of reward. The time span of the story isn't meant to be years and years, but it kind of is meant to be at least weeks. It would have been interesting to see more having to take care of yourself at night time because it was colder. Or maybe a slight windy day coming into the backyard would mean that we'd have to drink more to stay refreshed or have more food to keep our stammer up for battling through the wind. There's no doubt about it, when Grounded 2 comes out, I definitely want to see some sort of weather system. Although we have seen it in other games, and maybe it hasn't always done that great. Small Land was like the big thing that I was hopeful for, because it was going to add stuff like Seasons. When it came down to it, they added snow, but it just wasn't that interesting or fun. They also added storms, and they also ended up becoming just annoying. If you have seasons and weather, it's got to really change the backyards and open up areas that you wouldn't be able to get to normally. That's where small land went wrong. It didn't really affect anything other than just making you have to eat warmer foods. 
And I presume, obviously, that's why they maybe didn't invest time in it and ground it, because how does it really fit in the story of the weather changing? How long have they been in this backyard? What, a whole three or four months for the seasons to change? But for sure, maybe some sort of mechanic in Grounded 2 that could have maybe snow falling and making everything covered in snow and more creatures would come out in winter. Or obviously the other way, more bugs in summer that you might not find as much. And the big final one, it is Tames or Mounts. I have wrestled with this and I've said it in a bunch of videos in the past. Does Grounded really need mounts? No, because the yard isn't that big and the way that we play the game, it's about you and your abilities to fend off attacks from bugs and take them on. I've not always wanted Grounded to be just an art clone and have lots of bugs to ride that would end up becoming the meta. And I've seen from games like A Small Land where if you don't pay enough attention to the bugs, they still feel a bit useless and just superfluous. But that said, it still would have been amazing to ride on a roly-poly, to fly in the sky on the back of a bee or a wasp. It's got to be there in Grounded 2. There's got to be a way that we can evolve the pet system and make it we can really take full advantage of these bugs with ways to mount them. Have certain bugs available that can do a bit more damage to rocks that will make it worthwhile using them to gather resources or just to be our defensive allies. Maybe you don't have to make every bug rideable, but at least maybe four or five of them. An offshoot of Omnit were looking into controlling the mob with the York, and they found a way that they could apply different saddles. The idea being that you would go through the game and each stage that you complete maybe you would then get the reward that this next bug you would be able to tame. Rather than being able to go out on day one and go and get a beetle or a spider and absolutely dominate the rest of the game. Make it an upgrade or reward for getting to certain stages. But there we go. That is my 10. Some of it's unrealistic for sure. Some of it I know they can't have added and I know the reasons why. But it still doesn't stop me from wanting it. And hopefully some of them ideas might go into the sequel. And at this point, no, I don't care about the lizard or any other bugs that really didn't make it into the game. We've got over like 60 different bugs. I think we've got enough. It's never been a big deal to me whether or not they added brand new ones. List at least three of the things that you want to add. If you're not going to add all 10 in the comment section down below, look out for the rest of my guides hyping up 1.4. No matter how much didn't get added to Grounded, so much did. It has become one of my favourite games of all time. And I can't wait to see what they do in the future. So until next time, Rat Bags, laters.